can the average person do to move towards increased happiness, and how will this be recognized? We've been speaking about it the whole week, to meditate and do spiritual practices. And with that, uh, in spiritual practices, they are effortless. But in our daily waking lives, uh, if we turn our attention to the better and beneficial things of life, then naturally they reach greater heights of understanding. They'd be able to look at something from totally different perspectives and by looking at a thing from a different perspective, an ugly thing could also look very, very beautiful. So then your love for everything grows. And with greater and greater practices of meditation and translating the energy that is gained in medical practices by expressing it in daily action, life becomes smooth. And when one's life becomes smooth, you don't need any proof of it, because you feel it. You feel the calm, you feel the joy, you feel the peace. And this can be expressed in laughter, in tears, or just a beautiful complacency. We are totally active. And yet, at the same time, because you've discovered the stillness within yourself, you are inactive. So the maximum can be achieved with the minimum of effort. And that energy is conserved in you um, to make you go more and more deeper within yourself. So it requires that energy to go deeper and deeper within yourself and then you come out with more and more energy all the time. Hmm? So it's like the story of putting a small little fish on the hook and throwing it in the water to catch the big fish. So that is how it works. So the recognition of the joy and happiness comes on its own. You know when you're feeling happy. Oh, you know when you're feeling sad. So here the powers of discrimination come into play, uh, and that play is of the mind, because all cognition or recognition is of the mind. And the feeling that dwells in you of that happiness is mixed with emotion. So three factors come into play, feelings, emotions, and the thought that I am feeling happy, I am feeling joyous. Mm -hmm. For example, you go to a decent restaurant and have a very good meal there, you come out feeling, having a feeling of well-being. Ah, oh, it was such a lovely meal. Mm -hmm. But that is not happiness, it is not lasting. A few hours later you become hungry again. So this was just pandering to your taste. Hmm? And how far does the taste go? Hmm? Only about four inches from here to there. That's as far as your taste goes. After that it's all gone. So what remains? is the memory of the taste of the food. And that memory can linger on for an hour, two hours, five hours, five days, five weeks, that, oh, that was a beautiful dinner. Hmm? So you are enjoying the dinner in your mind all over again, although the dinner is not there. Same thing happens with adverse conditions, where you uh, keep on remembering living in the past. With me, I sit down to a beautiful dinner. I enjoy every morsel of the food, uh, and a few minutes later, I don't even think about it. It was, for that moment, unenjoyable. You see. So, 
Recognition comes with the play of the mind, memory, feeling, and the emotional self that was involved. The meal might have not been too wonderful, but if you're sitting down to the meal with a, with a lady you love, your wife or your girlfriend, uh, that food would taste much better. Hmm? Because here, your emotions too are stirred and make the meal taste better than what it would normally taste if you were alone. If you go to a cinema, a movie as you call it, um, and see a film, it could be a very good film, but go there in a bad mood and you won't enjoy the film. But if you go in a nice pleasant mood, uh, you are sure to enjoy the film. So these are all conditionings of the mind that makes people recognize certain things in us. But the higher level is um, not to recognize, not to feel, not to become emotional about it at all. That is a higher level. And uh, that level is just that knowingness that if it was good yesterday, it is good today, it will be good tomorrow. You don't ponder the past and neither project into the future. In the moment, and the moment is blissful, the moment is joyful. So, we do, if we have remembrances of pleasant things, then be sure to know that you will also have remembrances of unpleasant things. Hmm? And so, as I've said many times before, the greatest gift bestowed upon man is the gift of forgetfulness. Hmm? For if every happening in your life could be remembered every moment of the day, life would become terribly miserable. Hmm? So therefore all spiritual masters advocates, be here and now, live in the moment, the moment is gone and a new moment arises. Hmm? It's a new day. Hmm? And from moment to moment you'll always find the sun rising in its full glory and splendor and you are bathed in light all the time.